Hey guys, JV here with another episode of Journey to Andromeda, and this time we're focusing on the six squad mates of the game and covering nearly everything that we know about them so far. I tried to hold this video for as long as possible so I could wait for more information to be released, but now we're only nine days away from the start of early access, and I believe the next gameplay video from Bioware will focus on multiplayer because there's an event going on soon, so we may not get a ton more info about squad mates ahead of launch. But if we do, I'll be sure and update this video in the comment section below. Before we start, quick reminder that I'm posting a ton of Andromeda content before and after the launch of the game, including a breakdown of whatever multiplayer footage Bioware is about to release. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure and subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about some general info before diving into each squad mate individually. So we know that there are six squad mates in the game. Six is the number that Bioware has repeated on multiple occasions. So I believe that's going to be all the squad mates in the game. While Bioware has said that we could run into some old characters, don't expect them to actually join the squad. Again, these are the six squad mates. Don't expect a Garrus, a Tali, a Rex, a Grunt, whoever it might be to actually appear in Andromeda, you know, and become your squad mate. It's just not going to happen. In Andromeda, you'll be able to give your squad mates defense Defend, attack, and rally orders, and you can also prime and detonate attacks along with your own player character rider. So you can perform power combos, you can have your squad mates prime your enemies and then you can detonate them, or you can have them prime enemies and rider yourself can detonate them. It works both ways. We know that the power wheel is gone in Andromeda, so that's how you would issue specific squad powers from that menu in previous games. And also looking at the bottom of the HUD, instead of having like an actual power our icon next to the icons for our squad mates, we have little crosshairs. And I think that's just an attack command. I don't think that's a specific power because it shows up on both of our squad mates here in multiple gameplays. So it doesn't sound like you can issue specific powers, but hey, there may be a way to do that that they haven't showed us. Each of our squad mates has a set class of three active and two passive abilities, and that's what we have to work with. We don't have anything else outside of that. There's not nearly as much flexibility as previous games and not as much flexibility as Ryder, the player character, obviously. And of course, we're going to max out these skills way before Ryder. I believe a developer tweeted about that. There's only 30 points to be allocated across these characters as far as we can see. So it sounds like once we get to level 30 and, you know, reach that point with these squad mates, they're going to be maxed out. We also know that there's no possibility of losing one of our squad mates over the course of Andromeda. None of them are going to be able to die through some kind of narrative decision or situation in this game. So you don't have to worry about that. Just a few more details. We know that there might be tension between some of our squad mates, and that's because of their conflicting personalities and backgrounds. But Ryder can actually create that tension through dialogue choices, and characters will actually remember what you said and call you out on that if you happen to conflict with what you said earlier. Squad mates will also interact with each other out in the world. There will be random dialogue sequences, and they speak whatever's on their mind or observe something out in the world and talk about it with each other. That's going to be a thing. So it's kind of nice. It reminds me of the elevators in Mass Effect 1. Of course, we didn't have elevators in the other two games in the original trilogy, so it's going to be nice to see that random dialogue, and I hope it actually works. I know that Dragon Age Inquisition had a horrible bug where they just didn't have this random dialogue, and so there were hours of recorded of dialogue that wasn't actually in the game until they fixed that bug, so that sucked, and I've heard from hands-on impressions and stuff that that's not a problem in Andromeda, so crossing my fingers that we'll have a lot of random dialogue and learn more about our characters. Now let's talk about individual squad mates. We're going to start with Cora Harper, who is the Biotic Commando class. And so she is one of the starting human squad mates on the Andromeda Initiative on our Kyperion, along with Liam Costa, who we're going to talk about in a second. So she's kind of like, you know, the Ashley of the first two human squad mates, but apparently a lot better than Ashley. Cora is an operations specialist in charge of ground missions, and she's the second in command to the Pathfinder, Alec Ryder. She's actually supposed to be his successor if warranted, if something happens to Alec. And as we know, Ryder, our character, Scott or Sarah, becomes the Pathfinder. So something happens with that succession line we don't really know so far. For her background, she was a former officer in the Systems Alliance military, and then she was placed with an Asari commando unit called Talene's Daughters. And as you guys know, Asari commando units are absolutely badass, so she's got a lot of that combat experience from there. 
In terms of personality, she's professional and loyal, and she knows the rules well enough in order to bend them in her favor. She's very strict and trained to be writer superior, but as I just mentioned, that changes because of the line of succession and our player character becoming the Pathfinder, so she's going to struggle with that, at least at first. Also through some of the gameplay, we can see that she is romanceable by Scott Ryder, the male writer. We don't know about the female yet. So more info, her favorite weapon is the shotgun, I guess just in general, and her favorite ability is Biotic Charge, and fortunately, through one of the trailers, we get to see all of her abilities. So her active powers are Charge, Nova, and Shield Boost. Of course, we're familiar with Biotic, Charge, and Nova. Those are classic Vanguard abilities, and they'll be returning in Andromeda. And then she has something called Shield Boost, which is a tech ability, and this is actually not listed under the tech abilities that we've seen so far. So it sounds like this is specific to Korra herself. Her passive powers are Asari Commando and Defensive Training. Usually these powers just boost whatever the other abilities do, increase health, shield, stuff like that. So in general, Korra is definitely a an Asari Commando Vanguard with extra shields. That sounds fantastic. That's the only weakness of the Vanguard is getting up close and then dying. She's got extra shields, so she should be very powerful in combat. Next, we're looking at Liam Costa, who is a crisis specialist. That's his archetype, at least that's what the game lists him as in this specific screen. So he is the other starting human squad mate along with Korra. Again, kind of the Caden of the Ashley Caden, you know, Korra, Liam combo of human squad mates that you start out with at the very beginning of the game. Liam is a human security and crisis response specialist with civilian tactical training. He trained for law enforcement initially, and then he transitioned into crisis response, and he is kind of lauded for his multidisciplinary skills that sets him apart, and that's why Alec chose him for the Andromeda Initiative. In terms of personality, Liam is described as youthful, enthusiastic, and idealistic, and he takes his duties seriously, but with a lighter tone than most people, and he can be emotional, apparently. Some situations really do kind of trigger Liam. <laughs> as far as what I've read, but he's also hopeful about the mission. Some people challenge him about that, and we can expect him to apply his idealistic perspective on those situations. Liam's combat role is that of a close-range fighter, using his jump jet to move quickly towards the target. So, sounds like he's super aggressive, almost in the same way that Korra is described as well. So, Liam's favorite weapon is the overclocked dual Omni Blades, which just sounds amazing, and his favorite ability actually applies those. It's called Havoc Strike, where he leaps forward with his Omni blades to stun enemies and prime them for combo detonations. Unfortunately, we don't know all of his skills, passives, and actives, but we do know that Havoc Strike is absolutely a skill that Liam has, and it's specific to his character. Finally, we know Liam knows a lot about weapons because he's in one of the Andromeda briefings and he teaches us all about different weapons and how you're supposed to use them. So he is definitely a specialist in that area too. The next squad mate is PB, which stands for Pelisaria Besail, and she is an Asari. Her archetype is the Rogue Academic class, and we don't really know what that means right now. We do know that you find her at some point in Writer's Journey, but not immediately. She's not an immediate squad mate. You'll run across her in some kind of mission. We do know that her role is to help help Ryder find out more about the alien technology in Andromeda. She's super interested in that, and she traveled to Andromeda aboard the Nexus long before Ryder got there. So we know there's a discrepancy between when the Arcs arrive in the Nexus, so PB is on the Nexus, but she quickly went off adventuring on her own once it actually got to Andromeda. PB is a lone wolf adventurer at heart, and she's smart, but not good with formality. So as a result, she comes off as blunt and straightforward when she addresses certain situations. She's not about the rules or culture or teams and teamwork. She's a free spirit just after the adventure. We witnessed some of that in her loyalty mission gameplay, which was posted on IG, and I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. PB's combat role is gunslinger and biotic destabilizer, which is really interesting. We don't have her full set of skills and active abilities yet, so We'll have to wait on that. Her favorite weapon is the Sidewinder Outlaw Pistol, and her favorite ability is Invasion, which is a new tech-based ability that we've seen a little bit of gameplay of, but nonetheless, that's the only ability we know about for sure. Next is Vetra Nyx, a female Turian, which is really interesting. We've only ever seen a female Turian as an immediate character in the Omega DLC for Mass Effect 3, so this is awesome to have in Andromeda. Her archetype class is a Drifter Mercenary, and you find her at some point along in your journey. Again, she's not a starting squad mate, but she definitely traveled to Andromeda before Ryder did on Arc Hyperion. 
Vetra's background is that she survived the rough world of smugglers and mercenaries, and that experience made her street smart, adaptable, and cunning. So she is well connected and she specializes in gathering information. We know that she depends on friends and family, and her personality is much warmer than Garrus, our favorite Turian of all time, and she's closer to Tali in personality. So she's protective but lacks confidence in certain situations. Vetra's strength in combat is her heavily upgraded custom armor that provides additional shielding, and that leads into her favorite ability called Power Armor, which hardens and activates reinforced shields, providing unrivaled protection. So she has just insane shields. The final bit of info we have is her favorite weapon, which is a modified Cyclone Assault Rifle. So the only ability we know about so far is Power Armor, but it sounds like she's more of a ranged squad mate, which is kind of refreshing compared to both Liam and Korra. PB also sounds like a ranged character as well. Next is Nakmore Drac, the Krogan. So glad to have another Krogan squad mate after not having one in Mass Effect 3. So Krogan is a veteran warrior. That's his archetype class as the game describes him. You find him at some point in your journey, but he definitely traveled to Andromeda before Ryder got there. Drac is an elder Krogan, more than 1,400 years old, so he's this aged and grizzled veteran even by Krogan standards. We know he's been a soldier, mercenary, and even a pirate in his lifetime, and he came to Andromeda with his clan, Clan Nakmore. so we're definitely going to be interacting with Clan Nakmore. For his personality, he is loyal and stubborn, and compared to Grunt and Rex, he has more similar humor to Rex. He's actually more similar to Rex, but more mature than him. However, he's the complete antithesis of Grunt. So he's not young and experienced, doesn't know about, you know, what it's like to be a Krogan. He is a true grizzled veteran Krogan. He knows all about that. Drax's combat role is that of close combatant, so he's going to get up close and be super aggressive. His favorite weapon is the Ruzad Shotgun, Ruzad Shotgun, and his favorite ability is Blood Rage. Unfortunately, this is the only other character that we actually have all of their abilities for. So, Blood Rage, Drax becomes a raging force of nature, wading into battle with increased melee damage, damage reduction, and health regeneration. That's what that ability does. It sounds absolutely amazing. So his full list of active powers are Blood Rage, Incinerate, and Flak Cannon, and then his passive powers are Krogan Warrior and Grizzled Veteran. So to me, Drax sounds like a nice mix of, you know, classic Krogan, super aggressive, increased melee, increased health, all of that, but also a soldier with that Flak Cannon ability, and then a little bit of tech mixed in there with Incinerate. So, you know, Drax is going to be a force of nature. Finally, we have Jal, who we don't know much about, unfortunately. We know his archetype is the Resistance Fighter, so that's his class, and that doesn't really tell us much about his abilities. We don't know much about him at all. I mean, Bioware's really tried to keep him under the rug until launch, I believe. We do know he's Angaran, so he belongs to the new race, one of the new races in Andromeda. We have a little bit of a tidbit from a preview. We know he's an outsider trying to find footing among people from unfamiliar cultures. One of the only times we've seen him is in one of the story trailers where you walk up, it seems like, to an Angaran planet for the first time, and he's there. He's one of the first people that you meet. And also, we can infer from his class as a resistance resistance fighter that uh, he fights for the resistance. So there's some kind of resistance going on within the Angarans or some kind of resistance to another species in this galaxy. While it does seem like overall we have a nice cast of characters here, I'm really interested to learn more about every single one of these characters, Jal is the most mysterious, and I think that's on purpose. He's a new race, we don't know much about him, and so I really want to find out more about Jal, and I can see him becoming my favorite. All right, guys, that's it at the time that I'm recording this video about all of these companions, squad mates. They're really interesting again, I feel. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. What do you think is going to be your ideal squad out of these squad mates? Who are you going to bring along with you? Who's going to be, you know, your favorite as far as you can tell? Let me know who you guys are liking so far in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please click that like button. I really appreciate it. And also subscribe to my channel for more Andromeda content if that's something you're interested in. Again, my next video is going to focus on whatever multiplayer footage is revealed out of PAX East this week. So you're not going to want to miss that. Be sure and subscribe for more Andromeda. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.